Hey, it's nice to have friends stop by the studio and really you don't have to have an invitation to come see me. The Whitmores are on that list. Now, I have a short list who can do that. And Gary and Winnie Whitmore with Transworld Radio are here with us today on Mid-South Viewpoint. And it's great to have the Whitmores stop by as they make travels in the area to visit ministry partners and hopefully make some new ministry partners in the outreach of TWR, the work around the world that's reaching uh, people with the gospel in how many languages now, Gary? Now we say 200 plus. 200 plus. I speak one of those, <laughs> which is English. <laughs> that's right. I, I barely speak that one myself. But Winnie, it's so good to see you. Thank you. I want to get an update. And I think we, we've talked in the past about your journey with cancer. How are we doing? How are you feeling? Feeling great, great. I, I like to tell people that I didn't realize how bad I felt until I started feeling this good. <laughs> oh, but you're starting to feel good again. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm saying your strength's coming back. Yep. Oh, I'm yep. so glad. I'm working on that too. God's really carried you all through that time, right? You, you saw His hand working, Gary. Oh, absolutely. And you know, when something I can think of is when some tragedy or difficulty comes into your life. Too many people say, "God, I hate you. Get out of my life." Or you say, God, I don't know why this has happened, but help me. But it also gives a truth, and you see God's grace. It also allows you, like Winnie now, the opportunity of sharing with others who have cancer. Yeah. And that's what happened with her also. Her friends would come along, you know, they had cancer before. Oh, right. and so they comforted her and encouraged her. And one, encour- <laughs> one encouraging thing is she had to make the decision, does she do uh, chemo or not? Uh, why don't you go ahead and show the, share, tell the story about an advertisement for Hobby Lobby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was didn't know for sure if I wanted to go through that. Um, and then um, a day after Christmas uh, last year, um, we decided to go to Hobby Lobby because they have good sales day after yeah, Christmas. And there's time, a right? lot of people that go there for the good sales. Um, but it just so happened um, through God's providence that um, in one of the many, many lines with lots of people in each line, Gary got in line right behind these, this special lady. I was still shopping. He said, I told her there's, shop so, there's some so more. many people that you go ahead and keep shopping. I'll just <laughs> pick a line because there were probably eight lines, 10 people in each line. So I got in this one line, started talking with this lady. She was visiting her daughter. The, her flight was canceled. So she did some shopping at Hobby Lobby. And she was an expert at Mayo Clinic on exactly what this, Winnie needed. Well, yeah. So we talked for a while, then Winnie you know, got in line, and she encouraged us this. So it yeah. kind of, might say, pushed Winnie over the, over the, the line. Yeah. So I was, I was a 95% thinking I wanted, you know, I would do it. But that really kind of gave me the assurance that God said, yeah, go ahead. So I'll if you need you answers through. to prayer, go to Hobby Lobby the day after Christmas. <laughs> so I was say, some good things do happen in Hobby Lobby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Of course, you, you walked away with some bargains, too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah so we did. <laughs> that's always a good thing. Well, together, you have been serving TWR for many years. Gary started on Bon Air back in 1976. And in 1979, uh, the two of you got married. And we, we've shared your story before, Gary, on that first assignment to Bonaire, your wife, uh, first wife, passed away giving birth to your child, uh, David, David. Yes. And uh, gosh, I can't imagine what it was like going through the death of your spouse and you got your brand new uh, father to a newborn baby and, and taking care and just all of that going through. But God directed like he always does. He, he's faithful. You, you mentioned when we go through hard times, you know, where is God? Well, you have seen where God is. You have walked with him. You have talked with him. You have cried to him, and you have experienced just how wonderful God is and how wonderful he is to provide this precious lady in Florida <laughs> while you were living on Guam with a little newborn baby or a young child and uh anyway that how god threw uh, snail mail <laughs> 130 letters <laughs> 100, back and forth yeah. uh, and so it took 130 for him to convince you that <laughs> or vice was, versa yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> but anyway took god, more than one for sure <laughs> it definitely took more than one but through that god knitted your hearts which is so beautiful and the ministry you've been doing together as you've been looking for uh, partnerships and churches 
and with individual Christians. Now, that's what you're doing today. It didn't always start out that way because, Gary, your background is in engineering, technical, engineering. technical stuff. You went to the University of Memphis, and then you went to Mid-South Bible College, which I first met you, right. coming back on furlough and speaking to our chapel, which really ignited mm-hmm. in me – an interest in missionary radio, where Pam and I and our family did serve with TWR back in the mid 1990s. Right, and I feel like in a way I'm still connected because I get opportunities through this show, Mid South Viewpoint, to host you, Gary Winnie, and other TWR folks. I recently was at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, and John Somerville was on the show, and uh, that show is yet to air, so you probably will get priority uh, <laughs> since, since you actually came to see me. You know, I had to go. You're special. You're special. But anyway, I love TWR and, and the way God uses radio. And, and we know that's just one aspect now as technology has changed, as Social media, as, as we are using video now on the show, uh, TWR uses video projects, too. There's a number of ways that are being used to communicate the most good news, right, Winnie, that anybody Absolutely. can hear of Absolutely. Jesus Christ dying for our sins and providing God's hope. And in their heart language. That That's right, in their heart language. That's pretty important. It is. I, I think it one is. exciting thing is... Transworld Radio. The leadership of TWR could say, "Well, we're radio is is in our is in our name, so we're going to do just radio until the the, the last radio listener dies." But the, still, radio is tremendously uh, powerful all around the world. But now we're also using on the the TWR 360 app. There's over 100 languages: the Jesus film, the Bible, and depending upon the language many 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 programs so one thing that we're doing is we have the radio program somebody tunes in and like we have one program now called the way of righteousness which is our key program to uh, reach muslims and there's 100 programs and you tune in say on program 51 talk about isaiah you could imagine that somebody who knows who Isaiah is, they know the name, but they don't know who he is. Who is he pointing towards? Mm -hmm. And for the first time you hear in their language who Isaiah was, who he was talking about. But also you can say, tune in tomorrow, program 52, because each of these programs built. But now you can say, or get onto our website, get onto your smartphone app, and you start at program number one because each program builds upon each other. So we're using multiple types of um, follow-up or programming to reach people then follow up a lot of apps that our partners use around the world that we don't even use here whatsapp and so on yes and right. so that's why we use people in the regions and they know what the people are listening to their needs are and so on so uh but it's we're using all kinds of media now and to get the feedback from listeners, which I know you do, and it's so exciting, as you know, to hear from listeners and where they are. Even even what we do here at Bot Radio Network, weekly we get letters from listeners, and they're always uh, combined on, on an email blast to all of our staff, and we get to look at them. Mm-hmm. And I was just looking at one this the other day. Uh, a listener from Arkansas says, you know, I discovered you, and I listen to Bot Radio Network while I'm driving my farm equipment out in the fields, you know? Yeah. And when you hear things like that, but that's just one story of many that get multiplied. Exactly. But then you guys are hearing people from these remote places in the world and hearing these amazing stories how God's Word is impacting their lives. Well, right. I've right. quite often visited with TWR donors who have then told me, oh, I listen to Through the Bible or In Touch or whatever it is. And it changed my life. Did you ever contact the broadcaster or like WCRV? No. So that one letter that you get or email represents many, many more. And especially, as you're saying, the people in the middle of nowhere who are in in a closed country like uh, Afghanistan. We got 25,000 responses last year from Afghanistan. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow, 25,000. 25,000. That is incredible. Well, can we stop a second and maybe go to Missions 101? You've been doing this for a long time, and, and I want to bring our listeners into a conversation as we talk about missions. Just for a second here, first of all, what does it mean to be a missionary? Minnie, let's start with you. What does it mean to be a missionary? I think it just means to be willing to go wherever God wants you to go, whether it's staying here in the States or in your hometown, but just being willing to stay, 
to to go wherever and do whatever God wants you to do. You just you just um, when I when God was tugging onto my heart to go into missions, I was just working at an insurance company, and I just started feeling like this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, I want to do something more meaningful. Um, and so God just, uh, I just started praying that God would provide me with the, either a, a Christian husband or a full-time ministry he wanted me to get involved with. And, and I got, both. I got a bogo, right? I got a bogo. You got two for one, right? <laughs> yeah. I got the special. So I think it's just, you know, having a heart open and willing to, to do what he wants you to do. Because some people go, uh, you know, overseas and some people stay home. You know, you said something key there. You said having a heart. <laughs> And I think it's so easy for us to get content, satisfied with our life, you know, is going to church, you know, doing our job. And listen, again, that there's nothing wrong with that. But to, but to be open to hear God's voice, mm-hmm. you know, through his word, through maybe reading books about missions and things, preparing your heart, you know, and seeing if God might lead you, you know, into a, a missionary path. Oh, and, and I think – it's important to be willing to do what God is calling you to do. I mean, we don't trust God. Well, I I had two goals in life. I think, you know, to make a lot of money and stay here in Memphis for the rest of my life. So I went into electrical engineering, but I was senior at, then it was at Mid-South, well, uh, Memphis State, now University of Memphis. I gave my life to Christ because I was, I was in a church all the time. Every Sunday I was singing in the choir, but that's not being you want a relationship with with the almighty god of, yes and uh we were talking earlier about uh i think even thomas where jesus said you know you believe because you've seen me but blessed are those who have not seen me and will believe and in those days there were i mean the world was small compared to the billions of people that right. there are now right and even like transfer radio you think I, again, I was an electrical engineer. There's got to be a lot of accountants out there, mechanics, IT people, you name it, and your listening audience is saying, God's got a tug on my – there's something – God wants me to do something, but I am just a fill-in-the-blank. Yeah. And I think that's a good word, Gary, because because uh, missions has become so diverse, you know, as we look at uh, opportunities mm-hmm. to, to serve, as you just mentioned. Right. I mean, it's not all – you know, pastoring and church planting, you know, and, and doing that. But that's important. And we want to support those those churches and those outreaches into those communities, obviously. But really, God can use – I mean, here I am in doing radio here yeah. and, and locally, but this is a, a ministry that we do. And the same with TWR, and like you said, needing these technical folks. Uh, it's highly technical, right, Winnie? It is very technical. <laughs> even, even computer graphics, because TWR has a uh, – a ministry called TBR Motion, and they do computer graphics, um, making stories, uh, Bible stories, stories about Jesus uh, via computer graphics right. so that church planners can use those and dub them into whatever language they need to use them. What have been some of the biggest challenges to keeping your missionary calling in focus? You know, I mean, you've been doing it a long time. There has been times of discouragement, obviously, but what have been some of the biggest challenges to keep that? that focus uh there are discouragements um even when we were on guam for a total of uh, six years in hong kong i mean sometimes i mean guam was u.s territory um hundred thousand people then we were asked to go to hong kong now you got to be careful how you how you pray because in those days hong kong was making all the programming decisions for china and all the programming on guam and we were not getting all the information that we needed to, you know, to broadcast. So I said, God, they need more people. They're in Hong Kong. <laughs> and then we were asked, would y'all go to Hong Kong? <laughs> and that was went from 100,000 people to a concrete jungle of uh, 5 million people. Oh. In fact, what happened is when we were, they were asked, please consider going. And our devotion separately, and we weren't just using like our daily bread, separate copies. God laid upon each of our hearts the very same verse and that confirmed in our hearts that god you know wanted us to uh, go to hong kong yeah the reason we're back in the states now or well, there's many reasons but 
one day I was, I think we were on furlough, and a pa- I was going to be speaking at a church. The pastor introduced me. This is Gary Whitmore with Transworld Airlines, and he'll be sharing today. And God laid him out. TWR is a household name in the church around the world, but very few people here in the States knew about it. So in those days, in Transworld Radio, if you were going to represent the work, you had a heavy reverend so-and-so. And I didn't have any reverend. I was just a <laughs> EE on the end of my. <laughs> but uh, I, the leaders of TBR thought I was crazy. But God was calling us to come back. But right now, many of our workers cannot come back here and speak in a church, visas and other problems and so on. But yes. we feel that right now we are their representatives sharing what they're doing and, and projects and programming and so on, which we need. Well, what you're really doing, both you guys are doing, along with others too, and the, the similar work that you do, is you provide the oil to the machine. <laughs> Transmitters and towers and equipment is quite expensive, you know. But and, and but there's there's other aspects of it too, you know, uh, developing new languages, supplies and equipment needed for those projects, you know. Are those who translate, are they paid staff? Are they paid to do that work? Or is They're that- either paid staff or a new language we don't have Transworld Radio staff in XYZ language, so then we got to go to the churches in that country or that region and find people to do the translation and production. Or more and more what we're doing is not even translating, but we're doing, okay, you're a godly pastor in XYZ language, right. and here's the type of program or you know what type of program which we need to, to broadcast in, like the Way of Righteousness, the Prophets, and like this one program that our our director for uh, West and Central Africa, he was, you've heard of Timbuktu, a joke about, it's, he was born in Timbuktu. He's yeah. a uh, background Muslim background believer. He was the only believer that he knows in that city. Wow. Now he's producing a program of, what is it called, Winnie? Um, the, my story. My stories. And my it's story. testimonies of Muslim believers who have come to Christ. Wow. Oh, yeah. I love that. So that's a very, yeah. very unique yeah. program. You're not tra- yeah. having to translate yeah. that from English. That's, right. that's a very unique program. But I think another thing that we're doing here also is encourage people to pray because oh. uh, that's oil that's needed yes. too. <laughs> there you go. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah. giving them, giving so specific things to pray about and um, just encouraging people to pray. Yeah. In fact, one thing uh, in the church. <laughs> In the Nashville area that we were sharing with a couple uh, this past Sunday, is uh, thanking the people because the church it was supporting TWR's ministry into the Stan countries and even into Afghanistan. And I jokingly said, um, "Thank you. Please continue giving, but also uh, I could ask for volunteers to go to do door-to-door evangelism in uh, Afghanistan." But I'm not going to get any uh, volunteers, including myself. But what you can do is pray. And what the Pawnee transmitter is 500,000 watts on AM with directional antennas. I can't say where it is. It's broadcast into it, Pawnee stands for Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Northern India. Covers that entire area uh, each night. But there's a number of languages. I think even I think there's 12 languages that we're broadcasting. So at nighttime, here at WCRV is 24 hours a day. But in English, total, I guess, right? And yeah. but the Pawnee transmitter broadcasts in twelve languages at night, so each language has to be like like thirty minutes a night, oh and that's it. Right. So, what can you do here in the Memphis area to reach Afghanistan? You'd be praying, God, say that Taliban warrior who has had a hard day. It's hot. He gets into his Toyota pickup truck with guns in the back or whatever. And he wants to listen to some Afghan music on the AM radio in, it, in, it, in the cab of the, or the, or the truck. And for the first time, he'll tune across and hear God's word, the gospel, in his language. Well, that I believe that God's sovereign enough and don't say, oh, I'm just in Memphis. How can I? No. God can sovereignly move upon. And we've got all kinds of testimonies all, the, all yes. around the world. Yes. There was one guy who was about to commit suicide in Latin America, had a new, had a chair, had a noose around his neck, and then he heard some noise outside. Oh, if I make noise, they're gonna hear and, and rescue me. So he got off the chair, turned on the radio, got back on the chair with the noose around his neck, and the first words he heard was, you're not ready to die, are you? Wow. On the radio program, which could wow. have been produced months earlier. Yes. 
So he listened to the whole program with the noose around his neck, except that Christ got down, now he's a pastor. Isn't that just beautiful? And we're going to get yeah. heaven one day, and some little old lady's going to come. Gonna, this guy's going to come up and say, I'm, I'm here because you gave, you, you prayed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my. Praise <laughs> God. Those are shouting stories to the glory of God for the yeah. power of his Holy Spirit working in those ways, you know, that, you know, we think that we have to be the one that's actually on the foot on the ground. But no, I mean, yeah. God can use that radio broadcast in the language of that Taliban to be able to hear the yeah. gospel and the yeah. good news. And that one for the noose around his neck, too. What a great story. Yeah. And I know you hear those many times. Winnie, what do you enjoy most about serving so many years with TWR? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoy serving with my wonderful husband. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank but you. I do enjoy um, hearing stories like that and also knowing that TBR is is now TBR is not just Transworld Radio, yeah. but TBR has is you know multimedia, and it's encouraging to me to hear that even in the Northern Caucasus, the um, Women of Hope programs are on social media on Facebook, and they've received a lot of feedback from women in the Northern Caucasus who get onto Facebook to the Women of Hope uh, page and just start corresponding with um, with the with the people that sponsor that that you know they have correspondence and um, yeah is to me is just encouraging to know that God is still working around the world and when you talk about women of hope I mean <coughs> These are in countries where women don't have the respect, exactly, and they're they're a, a lower class citizen yeah. in their communities. Isn't yeah. that right? That's right. That's right. And they need to know that they're loved by God. They're made in God's image. That they have worth, uh, dignity. So there's their programs specifically designed to reach those women. Yeah, that is so wonderful for you, Gary. I would say, just. Again, I'm not making a lot of money, but <laughs> the faithfulness of God time after time after time. Yeah. One illustration, I think, even regarding our personal support as missionaries, one church that had supported us from from the 1970s. And then we started, it was a new pastor, and, and he said, well, we're gonna have to uh, probably drop your, your support, it's $100 a month, and finally we got a call Friday evening, Friday afternoon, from the missions pastor saying, okay, it's happening, well, you're gonna be dropping your support of $100. And I asked Wendy, I told Wendy, I wonder how long it's gonna take for God to provide that $100 again. Sunday, without asking anybody, we got an email from a friend saying, we, my wife and I feel we want to start supporting you for, guess how much? $100, $100 a month. <laughs> $100 a month. <laughs> so just seeing God's faithfulness, uh, getting yeah. the word of God out yeah. and providing for us. Yes. And again, we in the very beginning, we were talking about people saying, I feel God's calling me to do something, but and I'll, can he raise the funds that I need? Can he provide for us? And I can say, absolutely. Yes, yes absolutely. he can. Absolutely. And I can testify to the same. We saw God <laughs> provide, you know, and when we were heading to go to, and we were assigned to Guam as we did our first assignment with TWR, and God so faithfully provided. And it's just, uh, the late Adrian Rogers told me one time, where God guides, he provides. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and you, we have seen that over, and I know you have too. Yeah. And so, if, if, friend, if God is talking to you about missions, and, and you're wondering, well, I don't know how this is going to work out, you know, but I, I've got these skills, I'm not sure. You know, why don't you just go to TWR website and just look at some of the opportunities mm -hmm. and start praying how God might use your skills. and, and But more than skills, your heart being open to the Lord and really just that surrender, right? Right. To say wherever, however, I'm here, Lord, I will go. Because he right. could even say open your heart and then he closes the door, but he wanted to see your heart. Are you willing? Yes. And then he may say, I want you to be a prayer warrior. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we are too eager to, to often say, well, God cannot use me or I'm scared to be used of God. <laughs> Gary, on the way into the studio, you handed me this paper here that's titled The Afar or Not Too Far for God to Reach. It's, it's about a missionary and a national worker in Ethiopia. Right. Uh, I heard this testimony uh, several years ago in a missions conference. The uh, 
one of the missionaries uh, is in Ethiopia. The, the Afar people, A-F-A-R, are in Atria and Ethiopia, which is the Horn of Africa. And the I looked on like Joshua Project and so on, and, and the, the Afar people, how what percent are evangelical Christian? Basically zero, almost zero. But there is this Ethiopian Christian and a missionary were out out in the desert in this area and had very little results and they were tired and they, they stopped the car and they looked down and they said down to the right there is an afar village and they're, they're very hard to reach and we're going to just waste our time let's not let's not go down there so they stopped the car drank some water and then we they turned on the radio which they turned on to transfer radios broadcast in the afar language now as Paul harvey would say the rest of the story there is an afar cattleman who'd been out in the desert for three days he had lost he, he'd lost his cattle so he was looking for them for three days and he was getting tired and thirsty and he said he finally said god if you're real help me to find somebody to give me water and to tell me the truth he came across this car with these two guys and he said, do you have any water for me? They gave him water. And then he sat outside the car listening to the broadcast in his language, wow. gave himself to Christ. <laughs> Those workers who said it's impossible to go into this village, they went into the village. Now there's a small congregation now. And we just heard, got some more feedback that there's, there's a small church, even a prison ministry there where this missionary said, impossible god said watch me wow. <laughs> watch me that's what god says i love that what a great story and i just love to hear how god works uh in his way if he can use a donkey right he can use byron tyler <laughs> he can use Gary Whitmore. <laughs> <laughs> well whitmore is, I, I love you guys and i'm so thankful for the opportunities and it's really a treat for winnie to be with you because gary and i have shared the microphones many times here right. on the program but when winnie's in town it makes it even more special <laughs> oh, absolutely. thank you so much <laughs> thank you for coming together with gary okay so i i know there's a lot of projects going on like i said i, I spoke with john somerville with twr at the national Religious Broadcasters Convention a few months ago, and we mm-hmm. talked about many projects that are ongoing. And that's another thing. You go to TWR.org, mm-hmm. and you can see, I mean, I was scrolling, and they're scrolling, and list, and list, and I mean, it's incredible the opportunities that God's people have to connect with what God's up to, you know? Amen. Yeah. And praying for, right. and supporting, and going, and, and being connected with these projects, Gary. I mean, we could literally spend the rest of the afternoon talking about all what's on the list there, but the best thing to do is go to that website. Yes. Oh, very much so. Yeah. And again, it changes when there's something new happening and so on, so it's a great resource. And also, we have a uh, email update. We started years ago starting a weekly email update because you know we we did all the correspondence through letters and so on, but by the time you and prayer letters, by the time it gets to the people who are praying, the the needs are have already probably yes. happened. Yes. But with email, we've been able to, and we really enjoy. Okay, like April one, there is a new program going on the air, new language, so we were able to send out an update ahead of time. So can you imagine? praying that God will tune in, that for people, people to tune, tune in, in for the fir- very first time right. to hear that language. So those are the type of opportunities w- which we have. Okay, so. so if somebody wanted to get on your specific, that list, that email list, what could they do? They could uh, email me at G Whitmore, so that's G-W-H-I-T-M-O-R-E at TWR.org. Okay, and so that's a, I, I get that, I love it, because I get updates on the family, to yes. see how the kids are doing, yeah. grandkids now are doing, right. and then, but also you you outline these other places the, around the world that I can pray for and see what right. God's doing. What's exciting if you pray for things very general, you don't God's answer to me, you don't even know it. But when you're praying specifically, and then God answers, we can go back and say, by the yeah. way, yes, y- you prayed for this, and here's exactly how God right. worked. Uh, amen. Gary, Winnie, thank you so much. Thank you for you're stopping welcome. by. Thank you, Byron. It's Always enjoy here. it. Yeah, thank <laughs> right. you. Well, friends, that's really all the time we have today with the Whitmores, Gary and Winnie with TWR. Be sure and go to that website again. It's TWR.org, TWR.org to learn more. We're going to say goodbye now, and that's all the time we have on Mid-South Viewpoint here on the Bot Radio Network. I'm Byron Tyler, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.